When you hear DIY, you're probably thinking about crafts, home projects, but how about DIY medicine hacks? Because that is a very real thing, especially with Ozempic, Mount Jaro, and other drugs like them that are expensive and hard to get. And when I say DIY, I don't mean for you to like picture Dexter's laboratory or something, but rather people taking their medicine into their own hands by either messing with the prescriptions that they already have or by finding alternative forms of them. With people often using online advice or viral TikTok suggestions to get around the flaws of our wonderful little medical system. With one of the biggest trends right now being people essentially hacking into their Mount Jaro pens to get more usage out of them. With also outlets like Axios noting that Reddit and other forums are full of people providing step-by-step -step videos and charts. Right, all detailing how to break open injectors and extract doses in bacteriostatic water to stretch them. And this is the people hunting down these guys are saying the costs are killing their wallet or that they're losing access to coupons and can't keep up with the prices. And listen, I'm not gonna tell you specifically how people are doing this because I am not a doctor or in the business of teaching alternative medical tactics. But just so you can at least understand the basics of what's going on here, I'll point to a piece that The Atlantic did recently, right, where they talked to patients who really needed to find a loophole to save money on Mount Jaro. Because right, many have found with those pens specifically, you can split a maximum strength pen into smaller doses and save money. Because those pens, they come in multiple concentrations that cost the same. So by dose splitting, one pen can effectively become six at the fraction of the original cost. But it's not always super easy, and it can require sterile medical supplies and a little math to actually do it right. Which is why The Atlantic noting there are big risks here, because when you break open that pen, you can introduce microbes and bacteria to the drug and then cause an infection. With also both Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly saying they do not condone these practices and that people should not ration these kinds of weight loss drugs. You also had doctors telling the outlet they don't recommend breaking into the injection pens independently, even if they understand why people are doing it. Though this is you had Michael Snyder, medical director of the Bariatric Surgery Center at Rose Medical Center in Denver, telling Axios that those Reddit forums should not be immediately dismissed. It's saying there is something special about people in difficult circumstances finding a place where others can relate to their desperation and experiences. But then he also added, this is a powerful drug. If you're going to jailbreak any of this stuff, I really would talk to your doctor about it. And there he also said that there are often off-label ways to extend doses that you can work through if you just talk to your doctor. Because as Bruce Scott, the president of the American Medical Association also said, these people are essentially reformulating their own drugs based on the advice of total strangers. And quote, I don't think I can overemphasize the fact that this is scary stuff and that patients should consult their physicians. And this is others wonder how sustainable and long-term an option this really is. And this is also not the only sort of medicine hack with room for error when it comes to this class of drugs. With, for example, the New York Times recently doing a report about people using and overdosing on Ozempic alternatives. Right? These drugs are compounded semaglutide, but they're not brand name drugs like Ozempic or Wegovy that come in the prepared doses. It's essentially like Shein or Timu Ozempic that can be prescribed online or via telehealth, and it comes with a vial and a bag of syringes for patients to draw out the doses of the drug themselves. And just like the people jailbreaking Mount Jaro, tons of people using compounded semaglutide are turning to Reddit and YouTube tutorials for help. But even still, it turns out it can be easy to fuck up the do-it-yourself doses. With the Times, for example, speaking to a woman who accidentally took five times the amount that she was supposed to take and spent a day constantly vomiting as a result. And noting that some people have taken 10 or 20 times the amount they needed and ended up in hospitals developing pancreatitis, fainting, getting dehydrated, and more. Now with this, you're the Times noting that plenty of people do take compounded semaglutide and they're totally fine. They understand what to do and it works for them. But as the demand for the drug has increased, so have cases of things going wrong. With this year so far, Poison Control Center is getting 159 calls about compounded GLP-1s compared to just 32 last year. And in July, the FDA even had to issue a warning about patients dosing their own compounded semaglutide. With them noting that on top of patients lacking experience with self-injections, there's also a lot of confusion as some instructions use different units of measurement, like milliliters, versus milligrams versus just units. And adding with that, that compounded semaglutide poses a higher risk than FDA approved semaglutide like Ozempic because compounded drugs do not undergo FDA pre-market review for safety, quality, or effectiveness. Compounded drugs should only be used for patients whose medical needs cannot be met by an available FDA approved drug. And a big thing with all of this is that these Ozempic hacks, they are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to do-it-yourself medicine. Right? I mean, all the way back in 2016, you had doctors warning against DIY EpiPens after online forums were teaching people how to make them at home. Right? And that happened around the time that the cost of EpiPens was rising. While doctors understood why people were turning to this method, they noted that it would be incredibly easy to give the wrong dosage. And this is there are also other risks of the devices and sterile, which is why you had a doctor explaining to ABC News at the time that yes, say your kid was having an anaphylactic reaction. You could use a syringe and a vial of epinephrine to stop it, but we know in emergency situations, it can be hard to draw up. There might be problems with underdosing or overdosing, and it's not practical for most people. It is hard to do that and expect people to do that in an emergency situation. And this is in recent years, we've seen a rise of stories 
of people trying to hack abortion medication at home as reproductive health care access is dwindling. Oftentimes, people turning to herbal remedies that can be incredibly dangerous. With tons of viral TikToks recommending using herbs like pennyroyal and mugwort to essentially bring on a miscarriage for those who wanted to terminate their pregnancy but had no other option. But there, not only is there no data supporting this, it can actually cause serious harm. Right, pennyroyal, for example, can cause fainting, seizures, cardiac arrest, coma, liver injury, and more when consumed as a concentrated oil. And these herbal remedies actually bring us back to Ozempic because people are also trying to get Ozempic-like effects from herbs and natural supplements. With a number of people online touting a supplement called Berberine as nature's Ozempic. And while you actually had doctors telling Vogue that the research on this is very promising, results are gonna vary person to person. And of course, it should not be viewed as a replacement for prescription medication, especially for someone who medically needs Ozempic or a similar drug. And this also, as other reports know, that while berberine can promote weight loss, it's not at the same scale as Ozempic. But you know, with all that said, because I know we've covered a number of things here, I'd love to know your thoughts on all this. Because these kinds of hacks, they're pretty wide ranging as are the potential consequences. But obviously a lot of people doing this, they're not doing it for fun or for sport, right? They're often attempting things because they're in a hard place and they're trying to solve real issues. And so if you or someone you know has felt like they had no choice to try something like this, or they've tried it or just anything, I'd love to know your thoughts and your experiences on this. Also, just to close this out, because I know some people are gonna misconstrue this, I am not recommending anyone do the alternatives. This is just me talking about news and current events that are happening.